Guys, I can't believe I'm giving you all of this information all in one video. This could be stretched over several videos going over all of the details and all of the strategies. But I figured there were some of you guys that don't really care about the finite details and strategies and you just want the best information. So let's go ahead and cover the best maps to push every single brawler in regardless of whether you're playing with randoms or not. <laughs> Hello fellow brawlers, I'm Kyra Simon, it is time to brawl now. I'm very excited to give you guys this video even though I can't believe that I'm doing it. Now my goal is to give you guys the best maps for every single brawler to be pushed with randoms. That being said, there are lots of maps that will not be mentioned that a specific brawler could be played on if you have the right team comp or if the meta is very good for that situation. This video is actually going to be specific to the mechanics of each of the brawlers which will outlast even this meta or several other metas so the information will be good for a very long time. Now, I'm not going to be going over showdown maps for a lot of reasons and I would really love to go into detail for every single decision that I made for this video but with uh, 22 brawlers and 32 3v3 maps that uh, well let's just say nobody's got enough time to watch me talk about all that let's go ahead and jump into this guys just like every player starts with Shelly we're gonna go ahead and start with Shelly for this video and for Shelly what makes her good for a map is a map having lots of walls and lots of bushes for her to sneak around so that she can get close up on the enemy brawlers for gem grab She's not really the best, but she can be played on Stone Fort. She can play every single map in Brawl Ball with the exception of Backyard Bowl. For Heist, she can be excellent on Kaboom Canyon. And for Bounty, she can be played on Snake Prairie because of all the bushes, as well as Outlaw Camp. One down. 21 to go. Up next we have Nita who's good on maps that have a medium amount of walls and some decent amount of grass on there that allows her to get up close to enemy brawlers that have a longer range than her. For gem grab I would jump into the solo queue with her for all of the maps with the exception of echo chamber and stone fort. For brawl ball she can be played very well on backyard bull and pinhole punt. For heist she can work with the right comp and the right meta, but for Nita, I wouldn't play with randoms in Heist, and I actually wouldn't play her in Bounty at all. Next, we have Colt, who is good on maps that are relatively open, but have some walls in the way of the win condition. So, for example, Brawl Ball or Heist. I would not solo queue with Colt in Gem Grab for Brawl Ball. Um, he's good on Backyard Bowl and Pinhole Punt. For Heist, he can play any of the maps in the solo queue. And then lastly, I would not solo queue with Colt in Bounty. Next up is Bull, who's good on maps with lots of walls and lots of bushes that allow him to get up on enemy brawlers really easily. For gem grab, this is going to be hard rock mine and stone fort. Uh, for brawl ball, he can be played well on sneaky fields. Heist, he can be played on any map because his super is so great in Heist and Bounty, he's an excellent option in Snake Prairie. Next is Jessie, who is best on maps with lots of choke points that allow her to hit brawlers more frequently, as well as utilize her turret in different situations to help counter the enemy team. She does outrange a lot of brawlers, so typically she does better on maps without a whole bunch of walls or a bunch of grass. Gem Grab, she can play it on any map with the right comp, but for solo queue, I would recommend sticking to Crystal Cavern, Hard Rock Mine, Stone Fort, and Undermine. For Brawl Ball, she can be played on Backyard Bull because of its wide open area. And then of course I would not solo queue with Jesse in Heist or Bounty. Up next we have Brock who has a very long range which means that he does very excellent on maps with very few bushes but that still have some walls with some decent choke points so that it's a lot easier for him to actually hit those brawlers from a distance. On Gem Grab he can be played on Crystal Cavern or Echo Chamber. He can be played on some maps with brawl for Brawl Ball but I wouldn't do that with randoms. Heist he can be played in the solo queue for Bone Tunnel. Cactus Corridor, Forks Out, or Safe Zone. And for Bounty, you can literally jump into Bounty on any map with Brock in the solo queue. Even though there are some maps that do have a lot of bushes, he can actually use his super to clear those bushes, which will allow him to see enemy players that don't thrive very well on maps without bushes and snipe him off from a distance. Next is Dynamite, who is good on maps that have protective walls so that he can hide behind them and safely take out enemy players. For Gem Grab, that's going to be Chill Cave, Death Cap Cave, and Deep Siege. I wouldn't solo queue with Dynamite in Brawl Ball. For Heist, he can be played on Bandit Stash, Cactus Corridor, Fancy Fencing, Forks Out, and Safe Zone, and the other maps as well with the right team comp. For Bounty, this is going to be Death Cap Cave, Hideout, and Shooting Star. Next up, we have Bo, um, who does well on maps with lots of choke points to put down his super, also with maps that have a medium amount of walls, so he can take advantage of his range. And then, of course, if you do have him maxed out and have his star power, then he also thrives very well on maps that have a lot of bushes. For Gem Grab, you can jump into the solo queue with him for Echo Chamber and Stone Fort. I wouldn't actually play in the solo queue with randoms um, using Bo if you're going to be playing in Brawl Ball or Heist. But for Bounty, he can also do a pretty decent job at Outlaw Camp, Snake Prairie, Stone Fort, and Temple Ruins. Okay. 
We are done with all the Trophy Road Brawlers. Let's keep on going, guys. Next up, we have El Primo, who does best on maps with lots of walls and bushes that allow him to get up close to enemy brawlers. For gem grab, this is gonna be Chill Cave, Death Cap Cave, Deep Siege, and Stone Fort. For Brawl Ball, you can play in the solo queue with randoms for any of the maps, with the exception of Backyard Bull, where he can still be played. Just make sure you have the right team comp when you're doing so. For Heist, he does well on Bone Tunnel and Kaboom Canyon, and I would not jump into the solo queue with El Primo for Bounty. Next up, we have Bar Barley, who's very similar to Dynamite and the fact that he does very well on maps that have very good protective walls that allow him to attack from a safe position. For gem grab, that's going to be Chill Cave, Death Cap Cave, and Deep Siege. For Brawl Ball, I would not solo queue with Barley. Heist is going to be Bandit Stash, Cactus Corridor, Fancy Fencing, Forks Out, and Safe Zone. And then for Bounty, I also would not jump into the solo queue with Barley in Bounty, which is actually different than Dynamite, who has more health and more burst potential than Barley does. Next is Poco, who works on maps with a medium amount of walls, okay? He wants to be able to just get close enough to enemy brawlers to take them out, and then be able to heal behind a wall so that he doesn't take damage himself. Too many walls, and Poco is likely to get bursted down by shotgunners, who tend to thrive on maps with lots of walls. For Gem Grab, he can be played very well on every map, with the exception of Undermine and Echo Chamber, which typically if you're playing with randoms, uh, then you're going to want to play brawlers that are a little bit more longer ranged. For Brawl Ball, he can be played very well on Backyard Bull, Pinhole Punt, and Super stadium and then i would not recommend playing randoms as poco uh, in either heist or bounty that's it for the rare brawlers let's go ahead and move on to the super rare brawlers Ricochet does best on maps with lots of walls and corridors that allow him to bounce his shots a lot, get more range, and then also control a large part of the map. For Gem Grab, this is going to be Crystal Cavern, Echo Chamber, Hard Rock Mine, Stone Fort, and Undermine. I actually would not solo queue with Ricochet on Brawl Ball ever. For Heist, he can be decent in Bone Tunnel. And then for Bounty, his best maps are going to be Canal Grande, Crystal Clearing, Outlaw Camp, Snake Prairie, Stone Fort, and then Temple Ruins. Daryl does better on maps with a medium amount of walls that allow him to super out from protection, deal a bunch of damage, and then super back behind the walls and continue being protected until he can super in again. Too many walls and he tends to get overwhelmed by a lot of shotgunners, so I actually wouldn't recommend playing him on maps that have lots of walls. For gem grab, he can be played very well on Chill Cave, Crystal Cavern, Death Cap Cave, Deep Siege, and Hard Rock Mine. For Brawl Ball, he can be played on Backyard Bull and Pinhole Punt. I would not recommend playing him in Heist with randoms, and for Bounty, he can be played decently well in Canal Grande, Crystal Clearing, Stone Fort, and Temple Ruins. Penny does best on wide open maps that have lots of choke points, and those choke points are very important because then it makes it a little bit easier for her to actually aim her shots and hit a brawler, but she also then wants to be on walls that do a really good job of having a protective wall for her to hide her turret behind, particularly in the middle of the map. And that actually means that for Gem Grab, she's pretty much very good on every single map with the exception of Flooded Mine. I would not recommend playing Penny in the solo queue for Brawl Ball or Heist, and in Bounty, she's an excellent choice playing with randoms on Crystal Clearing, Death Cap Trap, Hideout, and Shooting Star. Now that we got the super rare brawlers out of the way, let's go ahead and move on to the epic brawlers. Piper does her very best on very wide open maps with a few choke points that will make it easier for her to hit enemy brawlers. She typically doesn't thrive too well on maps with a lot of grass because it makes it a lot more tricky for her to actually aim her shots. Obviously then she does want some grass so that she can use her star power to get some extra damage though. For gem grab, there are a lot of maps that she can actually be played with the right comp and if the meta actually calls for it, but I would not actually recommend doing that with randoms. The same is also true for Brawl Ball and Heist as well. So really what it comes down to is Bounty, where she is the queen of bounty due to her ability to burst down enemy opponents from a long distance while staying alive and by outranging them, then she can be played on every single map with the exception of Snake Prairie and Outlaw Camp with randoms. And if you do have a maxed bow on your team, then she's even good on those maps. Next is Pam, who is good on maps with a medium amount of walls that are relatively wide open. Having few choke points is beneficial to her due to her wide arc and the fact that choke points aren't as necessary to her as other brawlers like uh, Jesse or Penny. In Brawl Ball, she can be played on Backyard Bowl with randoms because it's a little bit more wide open than the other Brawl Ball maps and because she has such a high damage per second that allows her to actually deal with those tanks. I would not jump into the solo queue playing with randoms in either Heist or Bounty. Next up is Frank, who is good on maps with a medium amount of walls and bushes. If there are too many wall walls, then he will likely get faced up against other shotgunners, which uh, do a really good job of countering him. 
him, so I don't actually recommend that. On Gem Grab, he can be played very well on Stone Fort. For Brawl Ball, he can be played with randoms with any map other than Backyard Bull. Heist, uh, I wouldn't actually recommend solo queuing with Frank in Heist, uh, or Bounty for that matter as well. Next up, we've got the Mythic Brawlers. Mortis does well on maps that where there's a medium amount of walls and grass for him to use his cover so that he can get close to enemy brawlers. Despite his short range, he actually doesn't want too many walls that can block his attacks uh, because they, he, they actually do stop him physically, um, and they also promote other brawlers that do a good job at countering him, as well as he typically thrives on maps where there are going to be really squishy brawlers that allow him to get really close up to them and take them out before they can actually do anything. For gem grab, he can be played as an aggro brawler, not as a gem carrier on Death Cap Cave and Deep Siege. For Brawl Ball, he can be played on Backyard Bull, Pinhole Punt, Sneaky Fields, and Super Stadium. And then I would not recommend solo queuing with Mortis in Heist or Bounty, though there are a couple of Bounty maps that he can be played with uh, the right team comp. Next we have Terra, who does best with a medium amount of walls and bushes. Uh, she does benefit from having some bushes to walk out and surprise uh, the enemy team with her super, so that's really important. But if there are too many walls, then people can actually use those walls to stop her super from actually pulling them in. For Gem Grab, that's going to be Crystal Cap. Cavern, Death Cap Cave, Deep Siege, Flooded Mine, Stone Fort, and Undermine. For Brawl Ball, she can be played with randoms on every single map. Uh, for Heist or Bounty, I would not recommend playing Terra. Uh, with randoms in the solo queue. And then of course guys, we've got the legendary brawlers. Now Spike thrives on maps with a medium amount of walls. It typically doesn't matter too much if there's a ton of grass or several choke points because his attack just does such a good job at covering a very large area, even around walls. Now that means that Spike can be played on gem grab, any map, uh, brawl ball, any map. For Heist, he can be played in the solo queue for Bone Tunnel and Kaboom Canyon, and then I wouldn't solo queue with Spike in Bounty at all. Crow does his best with a medium to low amount of walls on a map. Uh, because of his poison, he thrives on maps that actually have a decent amount of grass, because normally brawlers that would thrive with not being seen in the grass just get ticked with poison, and then you can see where they are, so. I wouldn't solo queue with Crow in Gem Grab or Brawl Ball. Uh, you can jump into solo queue in Heist for Bone Tunnel, GG Corral, or Kaboom Canyon. Canyon. And for Bounty, you can jump into solo queue for Outlaw Camp or Snake Prairie. And then lastly, guys, we've got Leon who thrives on maps with either lots of walls or a medium amount of walls. For Leon, more grass is better because that's more place for him to activate his super. And of course, as I'm making this video, Leon is incredibly strong, so he can be played on every gem grab map with randoms, excluding Crystal Cavern and Echo Chamber. He can be played on every map in Brawl Ball. For Heist, he can be played on every map other than Bandit Stash or GG Corral. And then for Bounty, he can be played on every map other than Crystal Clearing and Shooting Star. I saved a lot of time just going over the maps that he's not good on rather than going over every single one of them because there's a lot of them. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a ton of fun to make. Please let me know if you liked it in the comment section below because I've always been hesitant to show you videos like this without gameplay because they tend to be a little bit more boring. But I figured the information was going to be worth it. And that background music, guys. <laughs> Oh yeah. Anyways guys, I wanted to give a huge thank you to my YouTube and Patreon sponsors for helping support the channel in such a big way. For now, this is Karos Time ticking by, and we will see you in Brawl Stars.